Hi, I'm M.J. Atala. I'm the co-director of the Middle East Task Force at the New America Foundation, where I co-directed with my uh, colleague and friend Daniel Levy. Uh, I'm here with Brian Katolis from the Center for American Progress. We just had a panel in which we were discussing the results of a poll by Gerstein Agni Strategic Communications, which was commissioned by the Middle East Task Force uh, on Israeli attitudes towards the United States and towards President Obama. There were some startling findings in there that uh, challenge a lot of the conventional wisdom. You can watch the video on the Washington Note or on the New America's website. Um, but Brian and I want to have a quick conversation uh, about something that came up in one of the panels and take it a little bit further. Uh, Brian, you're basically saying that all of our talks, uh, the, the panels that we're having, the panels that other think tanks have been having, have been entirely tactical. Yeah. We haven't been dealing on the strategic level with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict or the Israeli-Arab conflict. Um, you want to talk a little bit more about yeah, that? Yeah, I even take it a step further. I think when you look at uh, U.S. policymaking in the broader Middle East and South Asia, we are still reacting to events that occurred 30 years ago and the bases for our policies, whether it's dealing with Iran or how we deal with the Arab-Israeli front, um, and then certainly in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Much of what we're dealing with right now is a legacy of not just George Bush, uh, and what happened over the last previous eight uh, years before Obama came to office, but with 30 ways of uh, 30 years of a uh, way of thinking about doing business. And on on the Arab-Israeli front, I, I, I was teaching a course this morning, and I was struck by how much the approach, the strategic approach, is still very much grounded uh, in the Camp David Accords and the annex to it, and the broader vision of how do you advance that. And I think, you know, the the new team I in the Obama administration. Is, is doing um, a great job in terms of trying to push the ball forward on several fronts. But they, like some of their uh, colleagues who work on other issues in the broader Middle East, are, are in a sense stuck in a moment of reacting uh, to events. And it's a function, I think, of being in government, too. Uh, it's hard to push forward a proactive agenda. We've got a president that finally, I think, is very full-throated in a two-state solution. What's missing is, I think, a, uh, an actual strategy. We've got a set of tactics, some of which are very helpful, some of which may not get us uh, somewhere. But the strategic approach, I think, needs more discussion and, and, and uh, consideration. I think one of the interesting things about what you're saying is that this conversation that you just said, I've heard paralleled, but not by Americans, by some Palestinians in Ramallah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which has been that we don't know what we're doing anymore. Yeah. I mean, we've been in this process. You referred to Groundhog Day. You said that you know, just watching the last 30 years uh, is like a, a bit of Groundhog Day. And the, I don't know if the Palestinians saw Bill Murray's movie, but they, they um, definitely feel that they've been there, done that mm -hmm. before. Yeah. And the problem is, is that they don't actually have training in how to do analysis on strategic processes. They haven't mm -hmm. actually been able to even identify what's the difference between a tactic and a strategy. And so they're watching the world change around them. And it's almost instinctual that they've missed the boat. Something has happened. It's different now, mm -hmm. but they haven't come up with a new idea. They mm -hmm. haven't figured out how to engage in, in a new idea. Mm -hmm. But part of the reason I think that they're thinking that is because of what you're saying. We're having a, fail a problem in doing. They recognize that the United States is also flailing. We don't right. actually also have, we have a bunch of tactics, but we don't necessarily have uh, a strategy. Yeah, and I actually think the instinct, again, as I said on the panel, is much more pragmatic with this new team. It's much less ideological. It's mm -hmm. actually realistic. We've got a good team that isn't spewing, you know, mm -hmm. these sorts of statements that the road to peace in Jerusalem runs through Baghdad or talking about a war between Israel and Hezbollah as the birth pangs of the New Middle East. Yeah, the New Middle East. Yeah, uh, the new Middle East. The new Middle we don't East. have that. We have uh, a team that I think has been dealt a very difficult hand. But getting to a strategic approach that changes all of the actors' strategic calculations and their actions to advance what has been the stated goal of a comprehensive solution to the Arab-Israeli conflict and to a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is all easier said than done. And once you get into those government positions, it's easy for Amjad and Brian to sit here right. <laughs> at the think tanks right. and say, you should just do this and this and this. Um, but I do think one element that's necessary is a reiteration in a concrete way of what does the viable end state look like. I'm not saying that the Obama administration, it's their role to say this is the plan and uh, Israelis, Palestinians, you deal with it. But I do think we need a bigger sense of commitment. Um, this is what we're willing to pay as in terms of transa transaction costs. 
uh, here's a package, uh, like we've done on Afghanistan and Pakistan. I think we've articulated that message uh, to the people in that region. I don't. I have some qualms with the policy, but there's a sense of direction, and this mm -hmm. is what we want to achieve. That broad direction is there in the reiteration of a two-state solution, but we don't have yet, as yet a strategy uh, that deals with uh, the current complicated dynamics on the ground. Well, do you see that you disagree? You, on the panel, you said you were disagreeing with me and when I said that the United States had a, a strategic vision for the entire Middle East, and you said there wasn't actually a tied-up strategic vision uh, for the entire yeah, I was quibbling probably with your words. Uh, you said the, a grand strategy, and I, at this point, I think they've had policy reviews on certain pieces. Uh, and I think the operating assumption that undergirds this is the thinking that went into the Iraq Study Group of 2006. But I don't know yet in terms of how you would typically define a strategy, one that is inclusive and comprehensive. I don't know that they figured out how to navigate Iran as they're right. dealing with Arab Israeli and how to do that in a way that's conducive uh, to the goals. But isn't do you think that that's a prerequisite to having a specific strategy on the Israeli Arab front is to be able to see what US goals in the next not just in the next year or the next 4 years but in the next 20 and 30 years in terms of the Middle East in terms of its relationship with the Arab countries in terms of its relationship with the Muslim world um, does that does that need to be articulated as well in order to be able to make sense out of why we're investing so much in trying to end what is effectively a low intensity conflict between the Israelis and the I, Palestinians? I don't necessarily see it as a prerequisite for progress and mm -hmm. you know, some tactical progress in the next couple of years. And I'm, I'm confident uh, that America and generally, you know, and, 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 and with this Obama administration, once they focus uh, efforts on particular outcomes, they will achieve something. I'm, I'm, I'm not a pessimist about uh, America or this administration, right, especially, right. his ability to do things. So I don't think we necessarily need the, the full-blown, thought-out plan tomorrow before we start to proceed. You know, and, and when, well, when we don't have that luxury of doing that anyway. No, you, you don't have the luxury do of doing that. But what what is missing, I think, and I think there's a gap between I think the general vision and I think the the, the uh, not rhetoric because rhetoric makes it sound because I think there's power in this and there's a reason today that President Obama actually has achieved the or received the Nobel Prize. It inspired a lot of people, and we can all right. say he hasn't deserved it yet. But that inspiration matters a lot in terms of shaping political dynamics. What I'm talking about is we need a, a, an actual strategy that puts that to good use, the follow on to Cairo, the direct right. engagement with Israel uh, and the Israeli public, because I think there's an opportunity here to, rather than be reactive to what Iran's doing or to what uh, different terrorist organizations might be doing and then react to their uh, actions, we can proactively push forward uh, strategy. But it's, it, you can't simply just say two-state solution and then have a couple of pieces. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't actually tried to use the political capital that the president himself has generated. Um, it seems like that's political capital that, and, and it hasn't necessarily just been in a bank. We're sort of losing it when we're not, when we're not using it. Yeah. Well, I think probably, I mean, there are things that happen that aren't as public. So, I, and their engagements, this is a team that, uh, the, the peace team, the, uh, Mitchell and others, have been very engaged. When people talked about a diplomatic surge uh, in 2006 and 2007, in a way that's occurred. Um, some of it, by its nature, needs to be sensitively handled and quiet. You can't talk about this. It's kind of like what Intel analysts right. say about their successes. Um, but it's a certain point, my concern, is that unless there's a reinvigoration or a restatement of what we heard in Cairo, and I think we heard a little bit of it today in the Nobel speech, but there needs to be a, a clearer communications and more steady and regular. You can't just take one bite at the apple and then implement a, a couple of tactics. It needs to be a steady strategy that's that's worked. Um, and and as, as yet, I've not seen that. One thing that I thought was interesting in one of the earlier panels, Steve Clemens was speaking uh, about Wolf's book, and he, he talked about um, the idea of um, President Obama as Michael Jordan. He, he, he likes when things get really tough and when things look, when the game looks like it's being lost, yeah. he likes to come in and then play his real A game and, and, and win the game. Right. And uh, as somebody who used to be a Bulls fan, uh, I mean, I, th that image stuck in my head. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, I think um, if that's true, then we may actually be nearing a a period where the president will have to put on the Michael Jordan hat and, and uh, or chew the gum and um, and try to play at a higher level because on this on, on the Israeli Arab front 
right now. He seems very frustrated mm -hmm. uh, by where things stand right now. And obviously, when things are stagnant there, they're always moving towards another conflict. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I again, I have full confidence in this president and this team to, to really uh, re-embolden their efforts because I think they're thinking big and they're thinking ambitiously. I don't think that's been on full display the last few months because it's been caught up in this debate over settlement freeze and, you know, and, and if you, you do an honest assessment, you, you compare where we were a year ago to where we are right now. For all of those who were critics of the Bush administration, including myself, at least you had Israelis and Palestinians talking. Uh, right. formally. There was some sort of process right. that was set off in Annapolis. It didn't achieve as much, but at this stage we don't have that. We have an attempt to try to get them back to talks. I think the only way to do that is to think a little bit bigger than, than what we've seen in some of the tactics that, that are on display, and I think this, this president and his team can get it done. Well, I think your challenge to all of us at think tanks and, 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 and the chattering class, et cetera, is uh, exactly right then. If we're going to be urging the administration to be doing that, we need to get also up our game and start thinking and thinking that way as well. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Brian Katulis from the Center for American Progress. Thank you. Thanks, Amjad. <laughs>